So welcome. Um, my name is Kelsey. I'm a relatively new employee here at Eco Superior, and um, I'm doing this on behalf of Caroline, who I'm sure most of you know. She's on a well-deserved holiday at the moment. Oh, good, it works. So I love cycling. I'm a cyclist myself, and so I was pretty excited to um, be the one to host this webinar. This is part of the Safe Cycling Thunder Bay program, which is funded by our lovely city and delivered by Eco Superior. Um, and today our instructor is Janet Silman. She's gonna introduce herself before Janet. Hi everyone. Um, again, as Kelsey said, my name is Janet Silman. I have been a safe cycling instructor for just over a year. Um, and I have been a competitive athlete for most of my life. And um, part of my competition was in cycling um, and that was over the past 30 plus years. So I'm a master's uh, cyclist as well competing at the world level. That's cool. Um, so today's course is called the nitty gritty, cleaning your bike. Um, I am very lucky this is my commuter bike here. Janet was slightly repulsed by it when she first, <laughs> um, when, when we first met up last week and then she offered to um, use my bike in tonight's demo, which I thought was quite lovely of her. So um, I'm excited that this is the series that I get to host because that means I'm gonna have a nice clean bike. Um, this is the third in a six week series. Next week's course is refining your ride, which is all about effective gearing, braking and stopping. There is um, all of the information about what webinars are available is on the Safe Cycling website. Just Google it, you can navigate your way through. Let me see here for today's course. Okay, for today's course, some of you I think have your bikes ready to go and we'll be cleaning them alongside Janet. So make sure you grab everything you need right now. It's sort of your last chance to you get your bike, get your hot water, one bucket of hot soapy water, one bucket of hot soapy water, one bucket of hot not soapy water. Um, we need a wrench to get the front wheel of my bike, my wheel off, anything like that that you need, go and grab it. Um, we'll give you a few minutes. And while we're waiting for everybody to grab their bike or equipment or degreaser, then folks can also use the chat function to just say what they're really hoping to get out of tonight's webinar. Um, or you can just see what we're going to be doing and follow along that way. But if you do have any any um, personal bike cleaning goals for tonight, type it into the chat and then we will try and make sure that we uh, cover that. If you have any questions, um, type those into the chat as well. At the end of the session, we'll go through a, a question and answer period and let's see what else Caroline told me to say. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Normally these are offered in person with an average of four participants, but here we already have six attendees um, on the webinar. So the webinar, the pandemic has allowed us to try webinars which have actually proved to really allow more people to participate. So that's been really exciting. And I think, I think that's all, I think that's all I needed to say before I can turn it over to Janet. Just maybe just one other thing. Yeah. Um, just wanna make sure that everybody has the PowerPoint presentation. Oh yeah. I'm going to be um, kind of making comments about the PowerPoint and then I'm going to do the demo. Then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the PowerPoint presentation. So if you can pull it up and take a look at it while I'm chatting, that would be okay. If you can access it, then um, you'll just have to listen carefully and we'll make sure everybody gets a copy after. So I just posted the Google Drive link of the PowerPoint in the chat again. Um, so that should hopefully work. Um, Bob dealing with rust. Yes, Janet brought um, 
steel wool and was already trying to take some of the rust <laughs> off my bike and interested in chain and gear set cleaning tricks yep. and tips got it got it so without further ado okay. i'm going to stand up i'm going to stand up too oh just a little bit about where we are okay. we're under a tent actually in front of the eco superior building um and so we were happy that it wasn't raining a little while ago and now it's pouring so it is what it is and uh, we're just going to kind of work through it yeah so, so on that note if there is any um adjustments i'll tr i'll be moving the computer to get a bit closer to the bike and showing some things as well so please don't be shy if um you need to let us know about any anything that's not quite working. So, okay. Okay, so I can start. Go for it, Janet. Um, then I just wanna to say to everyone again, thank you so much for joining us, the nitty gritty, how to clean your bike. Not only how to clean it, but how to keep it clean throughout the year. And we will address some of the questions that people have throughout the presentation. And then again, um, at the end, if we haven't answered them. So the first thing, and if you can refer to the first slide, I have a number of bicycles and I'm gonna to talk to you about my, uh, my the cleanliness of my bicycle. So I, I race, I have a time trial bike and I will tell you that that is spotless clean um, for when I race because I believe that a clean bike is a fast bike, is a smooth riding bike and it just makes me feel really strong when I'm on a clean bike. So number one, I have a very clean bike. I have two road bikes and a city bike, and they're pretty clean. Um, I would say not as clean as my time trial bike, but not too bad. Um, I don't let the gunk build up, um, and I make sure that I get some of the, the dirt and grime off of the frame, et cetera, during the year. My worst bike, the messiest bike, is my, um, my mountain bike. And I have to say that I have this lazy perspective, had this lazy perspective that a mountain bike is supposed to be dirty. So I would ride in the dirt and grime out in the roads. I live out in Laffey, out in Laffey, bring it back, put it in the garage dirty, ride it again. And as you can imagine, the gunk builds up and the dirt builds up. And so um, the only time I really cleaned my bike, three things, one, when it was just really grimy and just grinding. Two, when I had to take it into the shop because I was too embarrassed to take a dirty bike into the shop. And three, I really cleaned my bike to get ready for the session. So if you take a look again at the first slide, the uh, picture on the left is uh, my, uh, my mountain bike. It's a Yeti. Cleaned it up really well. And honest to goodness, it came out so clean. I went for a ride after that and I was grinning from ear to ear on that bicycle. So uh, everybody has different perspectives and you need to think about how clean you want to keep your bike. Um, I'm going to move to the next slide. So this is the outline and what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm not going to really get into it. We're going to do goals, uh, what we want to achieve, what uh, uh, get right into cleaning the bicycle, drying it, lubing it. And then I'm going to give a few points about how to uh, keep it clean through the year. If you take a look at the picture. So that's the rear cluster um, or uh, cassette. And um, I thought, gee, do I ever have a nice uh, picture here that I got from the internet? And then I realized that that's actually the rear cassette on my mountain bike after I cleaned it. So anyway, I even imp impressed myself with how clean I made that bicycle. So I'm gonna flip to the next slide. And this is about outcomes and what you want to achieve. And we heard from some folks about getting into the, um, the uh, drivetrain and we will definitely get into that. And then I'll talk a little bit about rust washing your bike isn't going to get rid of the of the rust but I have um kind of revived some very very old bicycles and I was able to get rid of some of the rust on those bikes so I can talk about that a little bit um just again about um about goals is really to have a clean bike by the end and or have the skills to be able to do it at another time if you're not able to clean your bike right now and then have those skills and ideas about how to clean it on a regular basis I would like you to do two things right now, um, is to take a picture of your bike before you start cleaning it. Um, the before and after pictures are great. So take a moment to take a picture of the dirtiest parts of your bike. And then while you're doing that, I want you to think about, okay, how dirty, how clean is this bike? Using that scale that's on the third slide, is it sparkling clean? So on the liquor scale, that would be number seven. And if it is very, very dirty, it would be a number one. So score your bike somewhere along that, uh, that scale. And I would say, Kelsey, your bike is, um, the drivetrain is a mess. Oh, 
Um, um, it's some like two or three. It's not terrible. The frame's not really dirty, but I've been working on it a little bit. So, um, so take a minute and uh, <laughs> and uh, take a picture and um, and uh, get a sense of how clean or how dirty your bike is right now. Okay. So then, uh, should we just go? Yeah. Okay. The next slide then. These are the bicycle parts. I am not getting into details on bicycle parts in any way. Kelsey's getting tangled up in some extension cords here as we're outside in the rain, so be careful. Um, but there are three areas that I'm gonna focus on. One absolutely is the drive train. And so that's that red oval on the bottom. So that includes the chain. Oh yeah, I can show you on the button. Holy, oh, let me do that. Okay, so the drive, let's see if we can do the drive uh, train consists of your chain your uh, uh, chain rings here, um, the crank, uh, these little pulleys back here, that's part of the drive train and your, and your chain kind of uh, snakes through that. And then your rear cassette. So all of this is your drive train. Um, and then, so that's one big area focus. We're also gonna take a look at cleaning the frame. And that's kind of the easy part is to get the dirt off the frame. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the front or clean the front wheel and the back wheel. And the tricky thing about the back wheel, of course, is that it has the rear cassette on it. You can't even see that. Yeah, you can. Um, and we'll want to get that rear, rear cassette clean. We're going to then put the bike back together. Okay. So again, you don't have to know all those individual parts because I'm not going to be naming them as we're going through. The next thing, and uh, I know Caroline sent a list out in advance to talk about the different um, types of tools and equipment you need to clean your bike. So we're going to focus over here if we can. And I'm going to go over um, over some of the stuff. If we can get right to this little table here somehow. Oh, there we go. OK, can you get there? OK, so I have two pails of water. I'm standing in the rain here. One full of uh, soap here and then uh, a clean one. I actually have a watering can full of uh, clear hot water. There are some sponges, a big sponge and some smaller sponges. I have a number of different brushes. This is a bike specific home brush to get to the nitty gritty parts of your bike. But this is a ball of brush that I got from Canadian Tire and it works just as well as that home brush. Got a couple of other brushes for cleaning. This is a vegetable brush. Um, and then I've got a couple of toothbrushes in here to get it to the very tiny parts and then some nail brushes. And I will show you how I use those to clean my uh, to clean my chain and get into those other parts. This little thing here is a chain cleaner, a bike specific chain cleaner. I can demo if we have time at the end how that works. And this is probably my favorite tool for cleaning um, the bicycle chain. Here as well, um, or just some other brushes. This little doodad here is a flosser and it's not for flossing your teeth. I'll show you how to floss your um, your rear cassette. Um, a flathead screwdriver. I'll show you how to clean your pulleys with that. And a, well, this is just a paintbrush that you can use to put the degreaser on. And then um, the, the soap that I use is either um, a dish liquid. You can use a car wash soap. And this one down here is a bike specific wash um, uh, soap for bicycles. Then I have degreaser and the degreaser is, uh, oh, here it is. There's two things of degreaser here. It doesn't really matter. Again, I use bike specific degreasers because I think that that's probably the best. And then I've got some lubes. I do want to make a comment about WD-40 because someone said to me, can't I just use WD-40 to um, degrease and lube my bike? If you want to do a thorough job getting all the grease off and then lubing properly so that the lube holds, then WD-40 is not your option, the regular WD-40. But this company, WD-40, is now making bike-specific um, lubes and degreasers, and I would take a look at those. And I think that's it. OK. So uh, let me just, I'm just going to make sure I've covered everything off. Yes, I have. OK. Now then the work area, and I, I do want to make a comment about this because from my perspective, it's better to get all your materials together, get your work area ready to go, and then start cleaning rather than starting to clean and then think, oh no, I forgot something, run into the house and then run back or run into the garage and then run back. Um, so the, 
having all your material there and having your workspace set up is um, probably good just for pre-planning. And so the workspace here, I have used um, and set it up on a, um, on a bike stand. You don't have to use a bike stand. You can lean your bicycle against a table, a chair if it's solid enough, a fence. The most important thing is that your bicycle is stable and that you're able to turn your pedals backwards. People have bike stands, but oftentimes your pedal gets stuck in that bike stand, so that's probably not the best option. I've also used like a workhorse. A well, workhorse. Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So okay. So whatever whatever strategy you can to hold your bicycle upright. Um, I put cardboard underneath my bicycle um, when I'm cleaning it because the gunk tends to come out um, of your of your drivetrain and it makes a mess on your patio or on your driveway or um, on your garage floor. So my preference is to put a cardboard down or something to, or a drop cloth to absorb the gunk that comes out because it is it is really hard to get off. Um, you can wear, because uh, it is dirty, depending on how dirty your bike is, work clothes or old clothes. You can put gloves on your hands. I'm not using them today, but if you're going out for dinner tonight, then put some gloves on because it's a little tricky to get that grease out of your fingernails. Um, and then um, sometimes I use a kneeling pad, but this um, bike is up high enough that I don't need to kneel. But if you are kneeling and you're on a rough surface, then a kneeling pad works really well. So that's it for um, the work area. And so we're going to jump right into, uh, let's get started um, and clean that drive train. So the first thing to make sure of, and you'll need to do an adjustment on your bike. I already fixed uh, Kelsey's, not fixed, but put the um, chain and the big chain ring on the front and the uh, smallest cob on the, on the back because that will make it easier to get the back wheel off when we need to. And it makes it easier to access the, um, um, the chain on the front and the chain rings. Um, so I'm going to pour some degreaser into a can and then we're going to start putting the degreaser onto the, um, onto the bike. So I'm going to go down here, put the degreaser in. Okay, so I've got a brush here. Um, this kind of brush, but uh, you can use a small paintbrush like this. Um, doesn't really matter, but some sort of brush that you can get in and get the degreaser on your um, on your on your chain. So you can see it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put this all over the chain around the front on the chain ring. on the rear cassette and the pulleys. So, and Janet, the, the degreaser and all these tools you can just get from any bike shop in town or yeah, you, Canadian Tire or things like yeah, that or yeah can you, I, I think I've never tried Canadian Tire but I figured that you should be able to get it there and um to be fair I always use bike specific degreaser and lube um I'm not um I'm not that knowledgeable to say you could use car degreaser or car lube so I just stick to the bike stuff okay. so I'm just gonna liberally put this on and ask you to do the same thing Janet, what you're doing, is it considered a deep clean or a regular maintenance clean? This is a deep clean. Deep Very clean. deep clean. Well, you know, you could do more. Like you could do all the rust and everything, but I don't think I've ever cleaned my bicycle more than what I would do in a half hour to 45 minutes. Okay. But that depends. If you maintain your bike really well during the year, then, then you're probably um, not needing to do uh, a whole like a bigger clean an overhaul like my right. bike. yeah the overhaul and maintenance and maintenance. okay so we're gonna let that sit a little bit it's really gunky <laughs> you know i cleaned my bike this morning in it's my defense it's also my winter commuting bike okay. so <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. So, uh, because it does have to soak in that degreaser. So what I'm gonna do now is get the hot water out and a, a sponge and I'm gonna start washing the bicycle. The frame, as I said, uh, we're gonna focus on the frame. So from the handlebars all the way back, we're gonna put, we're gonna put lots of, uh, oh, we're gonna put lots of um, soapy water on the wheels and then, um, and then just put more soapy water here on the drivetrain. So I just wanna make sure that I haven't missed anything. Oh yes, I did miss one thing. A flathead screwdriver. And this, I think you're gonna have to come in and focus on this. So in the back, there are these little pulleys. So these little, can you, yeah, you can see. So these little um, rings here or pulleys that really collect a lot of um, a lot of dirt. In fact, your entire drive train is the dirtiest part of your bicycle. So um, to clean this, yeah, I'm gonna pull my, I can't, I'm gonna pull this up, so hopefully you can um, hear me okay. Um, to clean this, you can take the, um, the flat head of the screwdriver, put, and you might have to do this later as well, put it flat against your pulley, and then turn, turn your wheel around. It's hard to do it with a mask and everything. And then what it does is it takes the grime off the, um, the pulley, and you need to do that on both sides. Um, I did it earlier and took most of the dirt off actually. So I'm gonna try again on this side. So again, you just put it on the edge of the pulley and then you turn the wheel around and it takes the grime right off. So um, there's not a lot on there because I cleaned it a bit earlier. Oh my glasses fell down. Okay. Um, so we're going to let that sit a little bit. I do encourage you to take some time to clean those pulleys. You can also use some brushes. Um, many of the brushes are made just to get, here I'm going to, or to get right at that. And you can get in with a brush and really clean out those areas in the pulleys. Anyway, that takes a little bit of time, the pulleys and yours is really dirty. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do, as I said, I'm going to move over here. I guess I need to work from that side. Eh? There you go. There you go. Okay. Just talk at the. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I'm going to start to clean the frame. So with lots of soapy water. But you hasn't had a bath like this for a long time. No. Like it's purring. <laughs> it's like it's purring. Okay. So just like the front forks. You can get in there. We'll get in there a little bit more later. Um, underneath, underneath the frame is usually where you get a lot of mm. dirt and grime building up. So just work your way down and across your bicycle into the chain stays here. On the pedals. I'm going to go around on the other side. And this is where it's probably a good idea to get the, the cone brush or the bottle brush. I'm going to use the cone brush, but the bottle brush works the same. And you can get it into these little nooks and crannies. And um, Kelsey has uh, some racks on her bike and um, uh, some other things that um, we would just have to clean around, like the fenders. And so it's just to get the soap all those areas and you can do the same thing on your bike now we're just cleaning together so do you do this after every mountain bike ride or would you just no. like go home and give it a good spray with the hose and then every once in a while okay so the, clean. The, my reformed self not my old self with my mountain bike I would um, leave it on, uh, like leave the wheels on and I would 
until I get all the grime off. So then I'm not going on on my next bike ride with a bunch of grime and dirt. But I don't necessarily need to do an overhaul on the on the chain. Okay. So. And then I'm going to get under this this chain here, or the fender, I think. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so now that we have that frame done, um, let's go back and use that hot soapy water and wash the drive train because you have that degreaser on there and that degreaser will start to come off. So clean off the drive train with your hot soapy water. You can take your sponge and run it on your, your chain like this. You're not gonna hurt the chain. We'll go back a little bit. And so you don't have to be worried about water because everything is going to get dried and greased up at, at the end kind of things. So you don't have yes. to worry about. We're just going to make sure it's really dry. No, okay. not, yeah. Make sure it's really dried off. So we want to get all this. Now you want to get that degreaser off. So that's what the soapy water does. It's, it's, it's got, um, Kind of a degreaser in it and right. it will help get that the you want to get all the degreaser off oh i can see that that's looking good back there okay all right what we if it was going to be raining too much we did have a plan to do this inside Aren't but i'm very glad we did it because yeah, it's really dirty <laughs> I don't know if you can, I don't know if your floor looks like ours, but there's, yeah, you just don't have to be as careful. You just suds and everything everywhere and big bubble bath here. Okay, we're going to go back to the drive train for a second. Now that we have the bike all sudsed up, we have soap wherever we can. Still going to do the wheels, but that will be a second, a second. But we want to make sure we have everything out of the drive train. So take a look and make sure that the chain is clean. I'm going to do a little run Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so you, you just need to check if there's still gunk in your, um, in your chain. Actually, I'm going to show you something that you can do to clean your chain a little bit better than just re use a rag. So there are, this is where, how many for time? 25 minutes. Okay, um, a couple of tools. Okay, so, so the most important part in your chain is to get the dirt out of those, out of the links. Yeah, you want it clean on the outside, but you really want to get the dirt out of the links. So you can use toothbrushes, and I promise once I've used a toothbrush here, I don't use it to brush my teeth. But you can go through and try individually with the degreaser and these to get the dirt out of your chain so that would work because there's those little links and you want that grease and dirt to get out of there the other thing you can use and i think this is pretty cool i have two um, nail brushes you can put those two nail brushes together mm. like this hold it i'm gonna see if this will work it worked earlier and then just like you gotta squish it together pretty hard and then just pull it through whoops i squished it too hard um, it's not, you have to practice it a little bit with your, with your brushes, but it's not a bad way to do it actually because you get it from both, from both sides mm -hmm. rather than the toothbrush one side at a time. So you can use um, that. I just saw that on a YouTube thing. Now there's another, a couple of other things. This is the, the grunge brush. How do you like that? The grunge brush. So this brush it's kind of like putting two brushes or two um, nail brushes together and you just put your um, chain in between and then you run it backwards and that would be with the degreaser in it and then you just run it through a few times the best thing that and i really like this and i'm i'm a, a not necessarily a supporter of a park tool but this is a chain cleaning tool you open it up 
you clamp the, put the chain in between, you clamp it in, fill it with degreaser, run your chain through it for about a minute, take the degreaser out, put hot soapy water, mm. run your chain through it again. And um, it's a pretty slick tool. I really, really like this one. Here, let me, I'll hold it up a bit closer. So yeah, you can see that there's little brushes inside. It's really slick. So I'm not going to spend more time demo demoing that one, but um, it's just a it's just another tool to use. I really I really like it. Okay, so now that we have that done, uh, we'll come back to this after and uh, and wipe it down. But we're going to take the wheels off and start washing the wheels. Oh, the, oh yeah, did we get them? Do you want me to take these wheels to the back? My back wheel off? Not yet. Not yet. Oh yeah, there's um. Take little take washers, right yeah, because there's just little washers that have to move. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so we're oh yeah, brakes. We should have done that earlier. So while we're taking this front wheel off, maybe you can get your front wheel off as well. Oh, there we got it. Do you want to loosen that back brake? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Take that wheel? Yeah, I'm going to grab this. So to clean the wheel then, you go back to your sponge. Um, I'm going to grab a different sponge now because that one's really dirty. Um, and so with your wheel, you want to clean your tire first. You want to get the sidewalls and the rims. You want to get the spokes. Um, and then we'll clean the, clean the hub as well. So we'll do a, um, a clean on the, it's actually not that bad. My mouth like was really messy today. So we'll do a clean on the tire first and get that, that's where the dirtiest part is. Then uh, the rims, both sides, the spokes. So clean up the spokes here. I, I did some work on these spokes earlier to try to get some rust off. They mm. look bit better. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little rough. Um, someone asked about cleaning um, rust and depending on where it is on your bike, certainly where there's no paint, you can use um, uh, just something like this, coarse uh, steel wool and um, it helps, it, the steel wool, you can just rub it on if it's on the spokes to get it off, but just be careful that you're not doing it on a painted surface. And then uh, to get in, actually this is where you use the cold brush, to get in and clean that hub in the middle. So there we go, we've got that, the front wheel clean. Then we'll take the back wheel off. Yeah, the brakes are done. Okay. So again, uh, make sure that you're, you've got the chain on the big chain ring on the front and the small um, cog on the back. Okay. All right. So same thing with this, but then we're gonna do some special work on the um, on the rear cassette. So same thing. Wash the tire and the rim. And if it's really dirty, I cleaned the uh, other rim earlier, but it, in between the spokes, you can get in with a small brush. So. Some people are once, uh, how do you get the wheel past the brakes? So depending on if you have V brakes or not, the brakes are holding, yeah. So you have to unhook the, unhook the brakes. So if they're a V brake, I'll show you my, well, I make Jenna do all the hard work here. Um, so this was my brake here. So if yours looks similar, you have to squish it together, squish the brake together. And then this is hooked into this little clip here. And so then you have to squish it together and um, release it so that the cable isn't stuck. So hopefully that will help. The other, if it's like a really old school kind of bike that has like the cable coming down and then two wires, You'll have to, uh, do you know how to, I think there's like a little release on like one side yeah, or the other. Is if you're having a hard time getting it out, 
um, your tire out because of um, the brakes are hitting it, you could release the air in your tire. Mm. If you have a pump to put, pump it up that after and you can get it out that way. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh, got it. Okay, great. Okay. Good job. Good job. All right. So, so now we're on the back wheel and the back wheel, like I said, is a little trickier. Okay, so we're going to get this back, the hub back here like we did on the front and scrub that hub up. And then what's dirty, the dirtiest part is this rear cluster, but it's really important. So um, it's got gunk in between it, it's got gunk all over it. So I'm going to take a little bit more degreaser and I'm going to put it on the cassette. And then this is the fun part. I like this part the best because now you're going to clean in between mm. each of those cogs and you're going to clean the top. So if you can see, I take a cloth with a little edge on it. This is just a microfiber cloth. You put it in between each of those cogs and voila, it gets all, you have lots of gunk in here, mm. but it gets the, lots of that gunk out. So then you go to the next cog Oh, it is coming out nicely. So not only is it cleaning the surface of the cog, but it's getting right in there. You can see it's getting dirt right out of the- um, That's satisfying. In between, yeah, that feels really good. And how many times have you done this whole type of cleaning on your mountain bike this season? Oh, uh, twice. Okay, twice. And then if you were- but My like... road bike, my road bike, Yeah. I clean it regularly. I go in and clean it. And like, so just- like I look at it and if it looks really bad okay. and I'm embarrassing myself, mm -hmm. then, uh, then I clean it. And before a race, is, would cleaning it be something you would do um, specifically before a race just to make sure that it's in tip top shape? My time trial bike, absolutely. I'm really picky about my time trial bike and usually I'm racing someplace else. So as I take my bike apart and prepare, pack it to, mm. to fly, then I, um, then I clean it as I go. But I want my, uh, too bad we didn't look at this really closely because this is so I can come in close. now. Oh, okay. Wait, there's a cog that left that you haven't done, eh? Come on. Or a, oh, it's the video. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. And then we'll do the bottom. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. I'm really picky, I'd go back and do it again, but we don't have time to do that. But from the beginning to end, this is really, really clean. Really clean. Yeah, and you I know- I should have taken pictures like you said. I did. Oh, you did. Oh, there <laughs> you go. I took pictures yesterday. There's a little bit more dirt in here, so I can kind of try to scrub it out a little bit. Okay. I'm not gonna be really picky on your bike. You can finish cleaning your yeah. bike. Yeah, yeah, I need practice. <laughs> Okay, so now um, after we have all that done, so the front one and the back, back wheel. Um, oh, I wanted to show you the floss, and I'm sorry, I forgot to do it. This is the floss. What now, is it? A okay, so I used to, oh, it's kind of, it's bike floss. They sell it specifically, but I wouldn't oh, waste my money. Yeah. I thought it was a great deal, but it's the same idea. So I'm taking this floss and putting it in between each of these little cogs and cleaning it out. Oh, gross. But you, it is still dirty. You could use um, Bruce McKay, he, I know he's watching. He said he uses um, just rags cut up. Okay. I'll tell you with this, I wouldn't waste my money on this floss, I did. Because um, it gets stuck on each of the teeth. Yeah, there. yeah, like it's already ripped. Yeah, well, then you throw them away. Oh, okay. I shouldn't say that at Eco Superior, right? You... No, then you okay, re-gift them. Okay, re them. In, okay. Upcycle them. Okay, so Kelsey, I'm gonna ask you to put your back wheel on here because you're yeah. probably better at that. Oh, you know what? We're not gonna do that yet. Okay. All right, one more thing. We're, while, the, while the wheels are off, uh, we're gonna do one more clean at the areas mm. where uh, you can't get to with um, uh, when the tires are on, the wheels are on. So we'll just do a quick scrub in here. Oops and get under here and then under the seat. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. And there's some dirt in here that I'm not getting at. Here. Oh, maybe here. You can see there's all those little spots for you to get to, mm -hmm. but anyway, so you have the idea and then I can get into here right now. And clean in here a little bit better. Okay. 
So let's, if you put your back wheel on, yep. I'll put the front wheel on. Oh, that. Or did, you, or did you find the front wheel difficult? Oh, no, the back okay. one there. You know it better than I do. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, let's see. Yeah. So now we're putting it back together. We can tighten that after, don't ride till that's tight. Okay. Okay, so now that it's all there's a little bit of dirt in here, but that's okay. Um, now that it's all back together, we're gonna rinse it and then we're gonna dry it off. Um, really important to do that. And um, I think the other thing that's important here, I'm gonna turn this up a bit. The other thing that's important is that you don't use um, a power washer for your bicycle. It the um, spray is so powerful and get into the bearings and ruin the bearings and get in where some of the cables are. So um, you can use a hose, but just a really light um, spray, like a shower on the hose and not the power nozzle part of the hose. You okay there? Yep. Okay. So um, what I did was I brought a watering can and you asked me just rinse it off. Good thing we didn't do this. Oh my God. And we just rinse it off, get all that soap off. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do it, you don't have to do it so crazy like that, is you can just fill up a, a water bottle. Well, I'll do it in this one. And then you can just rinse it with a water bottle as well. Awesome. And just squirt the different parts of the bike. And that's about as much power as you need to get your bicycle rinsed off. And the next part is to get some dry rags. Again, the microfiber rags are really good and dry off your frame and all the parts of it. And did people see when I put the back wheel on, I just like pushed the wheelies forward um, in order to get the chain on in case anyone's having difficulty there. And then when I put the, when I take the bike off the stand, then I might, I'll readjust that, uh, trying to figure out where my finger's going. I'm going to readjust the uh, quick release there too, because the wheel isn't spinning yeah. well. And so it just means that I haven't put it in the quick release properly. So then I'll do that once I've got got it off and it's on the ground and I'm not, and I'm not trying to like juggle holding the wheel up. Um, the other thing you could do while you're drying it, and I think that's as important, is always like check your tires to see if there's any, um, any nicks or any nails or anything in your tires and just do an overall check. Then um, I'm gonna dry the, um, the chain just oh yeah now it's not moving eh? no because it's not on the uh, oh that's why that's where it's getting stuck. oh it's stuck in here oh okay you know what oh you know why that's why i was stuck. sorry about that there we go there. oh there we go Well, it's so clean, I'm not getting any dirt on my <laughs> Okay. It's, it's got to be loosened up a bit. There you go. Aha, uh -huh, there we are. going to dry this off a bit. This is still a little dirty, but you, you want to make sure it's really, really clean. So we'll dry it off. And I'm going to just really dry it well. More. You know, and it's, I'm going to tell you, it's so clean. I'm not getting any dirt on my hands. You hear that? She's not getting any dirt on her hands. 
And as it's going around, you know, there's little parts in here that we kind of miss. So you look on your bike and see where the grime and dirt is and just keep on cleaning as you're, as you're going. Oh, this is really good. Mm. Okay, the pulleys look really good. The rear cluster um, looks great. Um, our cassette, uh, the chain looks good. Um, chain rings need a little bit more work. And you know, you could use a screwdriver actually to get mm -hmm. in there and get some of that grime out. And I haven't done that, but okay. We're just, I'm just a little bit worried about time. So now that that's done, oh, I see something here. I'm gonna grab them. Um, you see dirt or what do you see? Yeah, dirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can use the toothbrush or a small brush to get into that derailleur and clean in between there. I didn't see that dirt before, but that's where those little brushes work really, really well. Okay, so the very last thing then, after you've washed it, you've rinsed it, you've dried it, then the next thing to do is to, um, is to lube it. So there's two kinds of, more than two kinds of lube. There's a combo lube that you can use for near any condition. They have dry lubes and wet lubes. The wet lubes, I understand. I usually use a dry one, but it's used for bikes when you're riding. It's, it's condition specific. So riding in the rain a lot, conditions like today, or any kind of winter riding, you want to have a wet lube, which is going to protect your bike better. A dry lube, clearly for drier conditions. Um, it, the dry lube doesn't last as long, but it's a, it's a thinner type of lube. So you need to decide what lube is better for you, depending on the conditions that you ride in. So I'm just going to get some lube here. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is a dry lube. You're getting a dry lube. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, with the lube, now I've seen people do it in very different ways. I've seen them put a drop on each link. I am not going to be as picky as that. I'm just going to take this lube and um, kind of just put it, oops here and just turn the, you usually do three revolutions to get all, you can see it kind of dripping off here. I've got it. Okay, so that's three revolutions. But one thing I forgot to say is make sure that you shake the lube. Mm can before because it's got a bunch of different uh, mixtures in it. We'll let that sit for a little bit and then just clean it off with what used to be a dry, a dry thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might have one inside. Or... Here, I found the other rag. Okay. Well, those got totally wet. Okay, so I have a dry rag. Um, so you want to um, let that lube sit in your chain for a little bit and get into those links, mm. but you also want to wipe it off on the outside. You don't want to have lube attracting on the outside, attracting um, dirt and grime. So we're just gonna just gonna run it through and um, just get the, the surface grease off that chain. So it even sounds better. Oh, it's so nice and clean. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed we got that far with mm -hmm. this. Holy kamoli. Okay, so there we go. Um, now let's see. We've um, cleaned the bike. We've degreased it. We've washed it really, really well. We've dried it and then we have um, lubed it and then wiped the, wiped the lube off. I read, um, I was watching a YouTube and it said, if you really want to, go a step further, you can spray some now regular WD-40 onto your, um, your, your derailleurs here and into your pulleys a little bit. And I just did that, not that I've ever really done it, but I saw it on a YouTube, so you could try that mm -hmm. too. I'm not that again. must be true. <laughs> must be true. Okay, so that's, um, you should have your bike finished and ready to go. Now we're gonna turn to the next slide. Get the, have the brakes up. Well, yeah, or, I'm not going to worry about it yet. Well, we'll you need to that. make sure before you ride away that you put your brakes on, that you um, pumped up your tires, and that you have everything in good order before you get going. I want you to, if you can, go to that next slide because this is the one that says now reassess your bike. 
So take a look and say between a scale again of one going up to seven, how clean is your bike? Is it sparkling clean? Is it um, still very, very dirty or is it somewhere in between? It might not be on your slide. So if you can just take a look and then think through, is there anything else you need to do to get it to that sparkling clean and number six or number seven? And Chelsea, uh, uh, Kelsey, I would say that your bike is um, not quite there yet. It's better than it's better than a five and it's almost at a six, but it still needs a little bit of nitty gritty work in there. So now that we've finished that part, the next slide says you can ride away, make sure all your um, components are tightened. You can ride away with a smile. And I have to say that's how I was after I cleaned my mountain bike. And honestly, I was riding down Maple Ward Road and I was giggling because my bike just felt so good. The next slide is about regular maintenance. And then you need to decide how clean do you want your bike to be? You always wanted it a seven, is a five okay? Can you tolerate a four? Mm -hmm. You need to decide where you want your bike to be on a cleanliness scale and then clean on a regular basis. Um, you need, should check before or after every ride for any damage or anything that's particularly out of order on your bike and fix it before you hop on again. And then um, you can um, just set it up um, on a regular basis and wash the frame. You don't necessarily have to take the wheels off. Um, you can use um, the WD-40 bike lubes or another kind of lube to, um, to slightly degrease and to re-lube your bike. You don't need to do that heavy duty degreasing and lubing on a regular basis like um, every week or so. Again, that might depend on how much riding you're doing and how dirty your bicycle is. Um, I would say for sure the regular bike maintenance and the regular bike cleaning will make a difference for you in the long run for your riding but it'll also make a difference on your annual cleaning. So, and I, and would you say that the more you clean your bike, the faster each clean gets Yeah, uh, in a sense? Yeah, I would agree with that. You still need to spend detailed time. I would say the more you clean your, the more regular you clean your bike, your deeper clean is gonna be easier, mm. but your skill sets at cleaning are gonna get better. Mm -hmm. How to use that screwdriver to get in there and really to pinpoint where the dirty areas mm -hmm. are. So the very last slide is just a picture of a bicycle in the field and the bicycle says, mm. thank you, Kethos. Mm. <laughs> so we Yay. can go to, uh, thanks, yes, thanks, that was fun. We, we really so, yeah, so then ABC, quick check, Ken has just typed into the chat, which air, brake and chain. Yes. So, yes. which is like a good, just a good little quick check before you hop on your bike. The other day I hopped on this bike and my front wheel was flat so uh it just is a it has a patch on it and the patch has been fine for i don't even know however long it's been in there but eventually it uh started to uh, leak air very very slowly so uh, make sure you do a quick check on your bike put those brakes back together front and back and anything else that you adjusted before you head on a big ride um if there's any questions or anything that you want to see close up how much time do we have about, about, like eight minutes. about yeah eight minutes or so so feel free to type anything into the chat um, if you want to see close up or any questions you have for Janet otherwise if there's um, no questions then I feel can, free uh, I can show you uh, some of the rest on the spokes on this wheel here um, okay here, I can just put it on. I do put it on. And, um, and uh, Caroline is back from holidays, I think this week. And so she'll send you all an email. You'll get the slides if, if the um, uh, Google Drive didn't work. And um, yeah, any other questions you have, you can always um, um, refer to that. The, the webinar is also recorded, so I'm assuming Caroline will send that out as well, so you could rewatch the whole thing again at some point, and yeah. Okay, so you're going to you show. It's down here. Yeah. Okay, you, oh, you probably can't see it that clearly, but there is a fair bit of rust. You could bring it up on each of the spokes. Well, I'm going to, I don't know if you can see because there's no, no background. Yeah, really so it, it's just that it's brown and rusty. That's what the spokes look like. The back wheel has, um, doesn't have the rust on it. So this is kind of a medium coarse steel wool, and this is painstaking work, but you need mm -hmm. to go through and then 
The thing we still have five minutes left. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing it all. I'm just showing you how to do it. You can do this on your own, but, but I can only get the surface rust off on this. And I said to Kelsey earlier that she might need to just to get a new, uh, a new front wheel. Just, uh, I, I can hear the, some of the rust coming off. So you just need to really work at it. And if it will all come off, that's great. Um, but wherever there are parts on your bike, it could be on your chain rings where it looks like there's rust. It could be on your pedals. I already did some work to get some rust off the pedals. You can just use steel wool. But where there's paint on your bike and if it's rusted through, honestly, um, you shouldn't use the steel wool on it. And um, I really don't know how to how to repair something like that. Um, same on this um, on the rim. I can get in. I already did this work earlier and get some of the rust or some mm -hmm. of the dirt out of the out of the rim. And do you recommend a good clean in the spring or in the fall before storing? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, here, you want to pop yep. that up so I don't have to kneel down. I would say before you get on your bike, before you're out, out in the season, if, you're, if your bike isn't clean and it's been sitting in the garage or my bike sit in the basement of the house, but they still accumulate dust, so do a check. Do it on a scale of one to seven, one to seven. How dirty is it and what level of clean does it need? If you cleaned your bike in the fall or late fall before you put it away and your rear cassette is clean and your chain is clean and it's got some lube on it, I think you're probably okay to um, to go out and not do another another clean. It's just been sitting in the house. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that all the dust is off and then it's spinning freely. Okay. Any other questions? And just wrote here, eventually rusty spokes will fail you at the most inconvenient <laughs> time. That okay. sounds horrible. Note, note please note, note Kelsey. Noted. Well okay, noted. Good point. You obviously have had that experience or I have seen others with that experience. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I am super excited to commute somewhere on this bike. I hope that um, I hope that everybody else who was able to um, clean their bike alongside Janet tonight has um a fun ride planned um yes go get it dirty again <laughs> and then uh yeah thank you so much for supporting this webinar and tuning in and um um it's just really great to have to see people attending these these um these workshops and I'll be able to tell Caroline that it was a success when she's back. So um, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, we will get the PowerPoint out to you. I'm assuming Caroline will be able to get the recording out to you as well. And um, yeah, and have have a safe ride. Enjoy your ride. And thanks again, Janet. That You're was welcome. really amazing. You're she did lots of work. So, so uh, Happy riding on your clean bike. Great. Okay. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye. There you go. Good job.